guys and uh, welcome back to my channel. This is Georgia Grace. Uh, she's been on You're about to say Georgia needs to I know, I was. I was like, it's Georgia Grace. Georgia and I have been friends for a very long time. We long started time. YouTube together. I'm sure by now you do know the story. Yesterday we put up a video being like, give us questions. And so now we're going to answer your questions. Let's get into this ish. My laptop is here. The first comment is by Georgia Grace. Why is Georgia the best person on planet Earth? Well. Do you want to take this one? <laughs> I think Georgia, like, you know, she's like one of my favourite YouTubers. Uh, I think she like embodies Disney princess. And like, Aww. I mean Georgia bakes for me and stuff. You're like a feeder. I have a reputation of just baking food and bringing it to people. It's not exactly a bad reputation to have. No. So. Why is Georgia the best? <laughs> food. Quincy Robinson. Tips on balancing makeup and daily life. Basically, what's your beauty routine? First thing in the morning. I go and I wash my face. I like having a fresh face to begin with. Just do my makeup. I think for both of us, makeup is really much like a hobby thing rather yeah. than just like a, oh, I have to do my makeup. Because we like playing with it as well. Yeah. I think often it doesn't ever feel like a chore. No. Because that's always my worry. Is like if yeah. I think I'm doing makeup for people other than me, then often I'm just like, fuck this. I'll the do my eyebrows yeah. and I'm done. The only annoying thing is that it can be time consuming because mm. I don't just like put a bit of concealer and mascara on. It's... Mm. The whole hog. <laughs> Fiona Claire asks, do you have any specific things that get you motivated? Ooh. Fear. Yeah. George and I both do creative things. It has to come from, completely from us. Like, yeah. There's no one else telling us to do it. Being self-motivated is really hard. And I think I'm motivated on more things. So if I have an idea for like a video, for example, and I'll do it, and as long as I'm sort of like, oh yeah, it's gonna be great, and uh, I'm really motivated to edit it quickly and like work on it all the time. If it's an idea that I've sat on for a while mm. and then I make it, I'm less motivated yeah, to work on it. That's really true. Doing things then and now. But even more generally, like, I think for me, it's just the paralyzing fear of failure and unfulfilled potential. Yeah. That's what motivates me. <laughs> <laughs> Mystical Catnip asks, what is the most important life lessons you have learned so far? If you've got a problem with someone, tell them. Communication is key to like, I can't stand it when people say they have a problem with someone or someone's annoyed them in some way and then I'm like, why are you telling me? You know how some people are like, yeah, but I don't do confrontation. I'm like, it's not it's even not confrontation. confrontation. You can do it in a really kind, it's, understanding way. It's like, to, okay, to be like blunt about it, you're just being a pussy. Just Get over it, talk to yeah. the person. That's how you solve your issues. Yeah. If, but no, if, like, we have a voice, if, use it. <laughs> I think the most important life lesson I've learned so far is that sometimes people are being dumbasses and sometimes you need to shake a bit of sense into them, even if that involves buying a train ticket, turning up on their doorstep, being like, hey, let's talk <laughs> about this. The biggest life lesson I've learned is like, do shit like that instead of not doing it because not doing yeah. it will end you in a lot more, lot more shit than the other option. <laughs> so sometimes just, just do it. Just do it. Like Nick says. <laughs> Thomas Quinn asks, how do you handle being in a bad mood? Well, how do you handle being in a bad mood? <laughs> uh, I... <laughs> I don't handle being in a bad mood. Uh, my go-to is aggression and anger. But to be fair, I burn things off a lot quicker than everyone else. So if I'm That's pissed true. off, I'm angry for a good, like, I don't know, I'll be really angry for half an hour and then I'm over it. I don't, yeah. I never let things simmer. Um, and I'm not gonna be like, I'm not the kind of person who holds a grudge. A, because I forget. B, I can't be bothered. Yeah. It's a lot more, <laughs> it's a lot more time efficient and energy efficient yeah. to just be pissed off about something, really fucking angry, and then you get over it. Yeah. It's also because it's a, such an emotional release. You feel better. Yeah. But then the problem is, the only problem is that everyone takes it so personally. I'm like, everyone, if I get really angry, people are like, oh, what did I do? I'm like, oh my God, get over yourselves. It is about me being angry for 30 minutes. It is not a vic I'm not attacking you. Get over yourselves. Because then there, everyone else is pissed off at me for two days. I'm like, fuck's sake, this was me being angry. My problems, not yours. What is wrong with you? How do you handle being angry? <laughs> well, I just sort of just distance myself from whatever's making me angry or in a bad mood. So if it's something that I've seen online, I'll mm -hmm. just come offline and talk to people or do something else. If it's a person that's annoying me, I'll just start trying to sort of ignore them and sort of mm. distance myself. And then I just sort of forget about it and it sort of goes away. Do you know George and I have had a fight like once so we don't know what it was about anymore? Yeah, we can't even remember. We have no idea. George yeah. was really angry and was like, you should know what you did. I'm like, that sounds like something I would do. Yeah. <laughs> yes, like, what do you do? <laughs> that actually ties yeah. into what we've just said about you distancing yourself. Yeah. And not, uh, not uh, learning to confront people. 
yeah. about like things. Do this last year, the flatmate. They really pissed me off, and I told them they were doing wrong and what pissed me off, and it was totally their fault. And they were sort of like, oh, that's just my opinion. That's just how I am. And I like that's just no, exhausting. just just don't be a dick. Yes, that if you take anything from so this I video, don't, don't be, be a, a dick. dick. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I just sort of distanced myself and didn't talk to them for a while till they apologised to me. It worked. <laughs> Teo VT asks, favourite Doctor Who season and how difficult were the exams? I like... Oh, I like so many. Yeah, this is I a like... really hard question for Georgia. Um, Personally, I like the seasons with the Matt Smith, Amy and Rory and River Song storylines. I like all of them for different reasons. So the first season, when I whenever I watch it, it feels so nostalgic because obviously I was only a kid when I started watching that. And so Chris Reckleson's Doctor just gives me such nostalgia. I like Clara and Peter Capaldi's seasons together. I think they're completely different to like season one and two and three yeah. and everything. Georgia just likes all you have of good it. episodes and bad episodes. So I think Georgia's favourite season will be the one she writes herself. Oh yeah. Clean um, job. <laughs> they also ask how difficult were the exams? Which exams? Yeah, which exams? I found A levels much less. Not easier, but much less stressful than my GCSEs because we had a lot of exams for GCSEs. I'm sure we had like over 20. Yeah, I think I had 20, for GCSEs I had 22 exams. Yeah. For my A-levels, Georgia, I had 15 exams. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the pros of taking a coursework-based subject though. <laughs> to be fair, this year with uni I've made sure that like all but one of my modules is coursework. Yeah. I can't handle exams, I'm like, nah. Exam-wise, GCSEs, they're not actually very hard. I think what's hard is that, A, you probably have a lot of them. Yeah. You've never done exams before. And the fact is, your exams range from like business stuff to like biology to like, you can't be like good at everything. It's just hard, because obviously we all are better at certain things. Yeah. So I think that's really difficult. In terms of like managing how you learn and what you learn, yeah. your time management. I would rather do A-levels again over GCSEs again. Every day just sort of getting back and revising mm. so it's hard to prioritize as well yeah tiring and like you're only 16. with my a levels i think it was easier in a way because you're so much more focused and you know how to manage yourself better you've done your gcse so you're like okay i know how it feels to just like do an exam and i know you know if i'm good at like time management or like yeah you know, you know what you did like wrong that. last time and how to do better this yeah. time. If it's A-levels, it's usually subjects that you enjoy more because you've got, yeah. got to like You care them. about it more. Ainsley Kid asks, do you have any ideas, projects in mind for bi-visibility with your growing influence? I feel like that's a question directed at yes, me. Uh, you. Not really, I don't know, not really. It depends what you guys would like to see, certainly. I don't have anything specifically planned. I think it's a bit, we were discussing about this. Yeah. We think that every single one of our videos it could like be an entire YouTube channel niche in itself. But we discussed this, like we aren't the kind of YouTubers who like, we're not the kind of people yeah. who can dedicate ourselves to like one thing. Like some yeah. people I watch, all, all of their videos are only on bisexuality or only on LGBT stuff. And I'm just like, I, I, a, I just, I don't really know yeah. what you'd want to see. And I don't have any ideas for what I'd want to make. Like, cause it's not, I, I don't know. Cause I don't let it define me entirely. So it's like, yeah. I, I, well, I, said, I don't know, I was it's hard. To today is, though, you don't define yourself by one label yeah. sort of thing. So when people say like, oh, what's your channel about? I'm sort of like, well, it's me in yeah. video form, really. Like, it's on all the things I like from Doctor Who to books to theatre, you know, like a range of topics. And I wouldn't want to just pick one of those and sort of not be allowed to talk about yeah. the other things that I love because... I like those things as well. I would like to know what you would like to see because I would definitely love to do more. But I'm just, I don't know what mm. I would do. Ben R asks, am I the only guy that watches your videos? Probably not. <laughs> no, I dragged up my analytics and my demographic is 36% male and 64% female. To answer your question. I think it's just a lot because guys generally don't comment on videos anywhere near as much as girls do. Um, and I think a lot of the people who engage with me in social media, like follow me on Instagram or on Twitter stuff, generally are girls. Yeah. I feel like guys almost, when they watch my videos, are like sort of ghosts in a way. It's like, we don't interact with my content. You kind of just watch it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of actually also to do with the fact that I went to an all boys school. I mean, we had girls in sixth form. So I think like, cause this is my lifetime channel and things. Um. So I think a lot of guys have watched my videos, even just one to see what it is like. 
So yeah. I think I shouldn't underestimate that either. Mm. And especially because like everyone I've met has essentially watched at least a video of mine. <laughs> and this is even yeah. like Chris's friends like at uni and I'm like, yeah. some people, did I tell you? I mean, we were clubbing and somebody came up to me and went, oh, it's sarcastic fish. And I'm like, I'm oh, drunk, so I don't know what's going on. Yeah. And I'm like, Chris didn't even say if they knew this person. So I'm like, I don't know. Hello, hi. I didn't know who this person is. If it was you, hi. I didn't know what's going on. Next question. Thoughts on the Harvey Weinstein scandal brackets and its repercussions in the film industry. Deep question. Deep question. Very topical question. Yeah. You know, I think he's like a pig. So it's worrying because it's industries we want to go into. And then you kind of, it does dictate this huge power balance well, power imbalance between the sexes in the industry mm. and especially like like producer, like people in positions of power mm. in terms of producers, directors, with people yeah. such as like with actresses and actors in terms of like they can't say anything because then these people mm. will stop them from ever working in it, that kind of thing. Um, but just bear in mind like Georgia and I don't have any, we don't really know that much about it. I've only seen sort of what's been on my timeline sort of on Twitter. No, um, I mean like as in, as in how the industry works, like we're not, because oh, right, we're not yeah. actually in the film or TV industry, like, no. but it's something we want to go into, so yeah. that's like a bit like, ah. It's worrying because it's, what if it's just not um, Harvey, it, what if it's, you know, the culture it is, sort yeah. of thing in the industry. Did any of you see the um, Emma Thompson interview that she gave? I will link it in the description below, like she described it as like the tip of an iceberg, and she said it like, even if it's one man who's done all of these things or someone who does one thing once it still is an issue yeah. so it's not that it's only like validated because one guy has done all of these things to all of these people but even if it's like one thing so it's like it clearly it is a culture that exists yeah and that's scary the impression we've got though is that it is not as much the british film industry as it is Hollywood, but I that might be, but it's just not been mm. publicised as that. When you hear jokes about it as well, they are all more like American Hollywood jokes rather than the British film industry. Mm. So the impression we get is that it's more a Hollywood thing than it is a British industry film film thing. But obviously that doesn't mean that we we don't know. So we could be the same or yeah. could be worse, but we just don't know these things. What I know though is the Oscar board of like Oscar board votes to expel Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein over sexual harassment allegations. Good. It's also proving a point. It's being like standing firm on the fact that these things are yeah. not okay and no matter how powerful you think you are, you are not untouchable. Yeah. So it is a good step forward, I think. Yeah. It's good that all these people have come out about it and that from that more people are sort of finding the courage to be able the to courage do it. to step forward and maybe that'll encourage people in you know, with other people that have done this. Yeah, to step forward and be like, hey, this has happened. I think the yeah. scary thing is because a lot of like, in the last few years especially, a lot, so many of these cases have come forward and mm -hmm. it only comes forward with like, when like, 10 women step forward being like, oh yeah, this guy did this to me. Oh, he did this to me as well. He did, like, only when it's like, like a, a quite a few mm -hmm. women does then it get publicised and the then repercussions happen and that's yeah. horrifying. Yeah. Imagine if it's just one thing that's happened to you and then you feel because the Cara Delevingne thing that she said was like, but she didn't want to come forward because like she didn't want to like was it ruin his life or like his family's yeah. life or stuff like that and it's like it's terrifying. So it's the idea that you can only come forward if you're like with loads of other yeah. women. It's like it, that's really scary. It is. But hopefully the media portrayal of this is that. This is not okay. So, you know, stop harassing women. That would be great. Stop harassing everyone. Again, don't, don't be a dick. dick. <laughs> it's related to the YouTube sort of community. Oh my god, with all that stuff that happened with, um, like, ages ago, yeah, like yeah. Sam Pepper and, like, Alex Yeah, Lane. and she was saying how, like, um, people automatically sort of go to their friends and go, but why didn't you speak up? Why didn't you know? And they're like, well, sometimes we don't, sort of thing. Like, why are you blaming at us? Like, yeah, like, if it's you look at it, the shock to us as it is to you. Yeah, like, if you look at it on a really small scale, mm. um, the example I can give is, last week, I think I got, like, on the street, I maybe got catcalled seven or eight times? I even got asked out. Somebody literally stopped me and goes, sorry, random question, but could I take you for coffee? And I'm like, eh. Yeah, I have a boyfriend. I'll say no. And I like, mentioned it to my dad only after like eight things had happened because you don't think to mention it because it is so normalised yeah, to you. It's a normalised part of society. As well as like victim blaming. I think people don't come forward because it's always, 
over them, what did you do to lead them on? Why yeah. is it like, what did you do to, mm. to make them think that? I saw when the Emma Thompson video came out, some people sort of saying, yeah, but if you knew that this was happening, why didn't you speak up about it? And it's like, well, it's so difficult because it's it is so something difficult. so sensitive. And in an industry, people risk losing their jobs. Yes, and it's a horrible thing, but I'm glad that it's been put into the light and that yeah. people are speaking up about it and actively sort of doing something. And the scary thing is it's definitely not just the film industry, it's definitely not just Hollywood. This happens everywhere, but people, because it is within an industry, people are scared for their jobs. Yeah, and so then it's, it's not just you know, like any other yeah. sexual harassment cases. There's a power balance, like these people yeah. have something to lose by just wanting justice for themselves, mm. so it's really fucking tricky and really horrible. Yeah. But it is so tricky, so. Ella Jones asks... Oh wow, quite a lot. I know. I was really pleased with this, I was like... <laughs> Best thing about living in London? Uh, well, <laughs> everything. It's a completely different, like, uni experience to anywhere else. Mm. I really enjoy my access to culture, mm. I enjoy knowing such a big city yeah because it's, well, it's kind of like smaller both, and smaller it's we really both nice. study in sort of big cities so i'm based in manchester you're based in london london is completely different to manchester even though they're both cities mm. and in some sense they're the same yeah you get a completely different vibe i like the busyness and i know that even if it I'm feels like, very social very social and even when i'm here and i'm like alone and it's calm and stuff i'm still like i know there's an entire city out there of things for me to do places for me to meet my friends mm. for places to hang out and do stuff you feel like you're part of something bigger and that's quite a nice feeling yeah apart from when you're on the tube at rush hour and you literally have someone's armpit in your face yeah <laughs> don't enjoy sardines one fashion trend you hate Oh, you know when girls wear those like really cute, like delicate, like dresses, and then they wear a t-shirt underneath. Uh, yes. Why? Personally, because I'm the kind of person who'd happily wear that dress. I'm like, you've. I feel like you ruined it. In terms of my taste, I feel like you've, I feel like you've ruined it wearing a t-shirt underneath. I'm like, that's not the. You like, ruined the point of it. But also, it depends what t-shirt. Yeah, but it's always like sort of crew neck long sleeve t-shirts. I'm like, but long sleeve. No, no, no. No, they've been wearing long sleeves. I'm like, oh no, short sleeves. I'm like, that's cool. I like that. I just, I'm like, because it's mainly, I think it's because I would wear that dress. Yeah. And I'm like, without the t-shirt, because I'm like, but yeah. what's wrong with a bit of cleavage? It's fun. Yeah. I'm sort of like, with most things that people wear, I'm like, oh, that's a bit weird. And then I'm like, yeah, but you're not the one wearing it. So it's fine, Georgia. <laughs> I'm doing what they want. Tips you wish you had before starting uni? I've got almost too many tips before starting uni. I don't think um, I've got any! The conversation that sort of summer before I went to uni is like, oh, are you going to uni? Here is like 50 tips from when I went to uni like 10 years ago. <laughs> and I'm like, cool, great. And then some of them were useful and then some of them, you know, it's completely changed. I feel like people that are your friends in the first well, like one or two months of uni will not be your friends by the end of it, believe me. Because I think you cling on to people because you're almost scared of making yeah. friends because you haven't had to make friends since, what, year seven? So you're like, ah, and you just cling to the first people you see yeah. until you find people that you really like get close to and like are actually your friends. Like I, like my group of friends has only existed since like the second term of uni. Ellie was my only actual friend <laughs> in the first semester. I like because if you watch my vlogs from this time last year, for like loads of random people who appear in one episode and never appear again, <laughs> it's really weird. I'm like, uh, <laughs> uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was quite lucky because the sort of class that I was in for most of my lessons, we were all a pretty like good bunch, like we all sort of got along. We have like a big group chat now and we've had like flat parties since and everything. Group chats make everything. They do. It's like you're officially in a group then. And you can sort of tell how someone is. It's nice. Tips you wish you had before starting your A-levels. God, that was such a long time Expect ago. breakdowns. Take time for <laughs> your mental health. A majority of my A-levels coursework and I wish I hadn't given myself so much coursework. Because it meant I was always busy. What is your star sign and do you believe in the zodiac? <laughs> My star sign is Aquarius and I don't... I'm an Aries and it's funny because if you read all the shit for Aries, I'm like, that's me to a T. It's <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> do you ever do the... No, you probably don't because you're more sane no. than I am. Where like, you have the other person's star sign. Because um, I think Chris is like, I'm Aries. I think he's a Sagittarius. So I have points to like, we put your star sign and their star sign. And then it tells you how compatible you It's a good laugh, don't take it too serious. Celia <laughs> has asked us, what is the hardest part of a long distance friendship? In terms of long distance friendship, ours is not that difficult because we've known each other 
uh, for because such a long time. Yeah, we've known each other such a long time. I mean, we're in our second year of uni, and we have literally been best friends since um, first day of year seven. I have the impulse to speak Dutch to Georgia. I do that to my family. Georgia yeah. is like family to me, and because a lot of my family are very far away and stuff, like I don't see them very much. Yeah. I know, like, it's kind of unconditional love. I know Georgia and I are going to be friends no matter yeah. what. I know that I don't need to text you constantly no. to reassure that we are friends. Yeah. Like, I can't yeah. deal with, like, high-maintenance friendships. I only have time for two people to be high-maintenance in my life, being my mum and my boyfriend. And <laughs> <laughs> I got no time for anyone else! It's quite surprising when people got friends from high school or sort of um, sixth form that they're sort of friends with and they always have, like, problems with them so, like, they don't see them and they feel like... You know when you meet someone you haven't seen in ages and it's sort of awkward Weird. Yeah. because you haven't seen each other in so long and so much has changed or you don't know how quite to quite like, speak to them. We don't have that. No. When we At all. see each other, we weren't spoken to each other for months. And Even though I think now we interact more because of Twitter. Yeah. As soon as we see each other, it's like no time has passed. Yeah, and that's we don't always... have that awkward. Sort it's never. It's never that. I don't know what it is. It's never that. It's a really familiar feeling, and yeah. it is kind of like family in terms of like you've ever seen them in ages. It's like hey. Yeah. I mean, you pick off where you left. You're such a chill person. And you just... Yeah. We know, when have we ever had issues in our relationship? Exactly. Bar that one like, time in year nine when they're like, like, what have you done? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think a lot of my friends are actually very chill. And if you're not a chill person and you like to start shit, like, you get just like... You yeah. get cut out. Like, I just don't speak to you anymore. And they'll... My friendships. I burn a lot of bridges. <laughs> Burn a lot of bridges, as a result I have a lot of very, I don't have very many friends, but I have a lot of very close friends. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and I much prefer that. What would you say to someone who hasn't known this person for eight years? Their like, person that they have a long distance relationship with. Yeah. Don't make the other person feel bad about not being able to give you their time. Yes. Don't be like, why haven't you spoken to me? And Do you not way? care about me? Am I not important to you? Why haven't you come to see me? Like, I yeah, said, like, come see me. Like, busy. I invited you to come see me and you said no. I'm like, hey, I said it was a joke, this was none of your business. It's just because then it also becomes, if it becomes a burden, you yeah. are, your friendship is fucked. Yeah. We always try to see each other in sort of like holidays, whether that's like summer, Christmas. We see each other like once every six months. Yeah. We tried to do it this summer. I mean, that just, just didn't work we out. We just couldn't. The last time I so saw Georgia like, was like, what? April? March? Hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> this time you're like, but... <laughs> Feel like that long. That's in my like, head, it's like July. <laughs> Still, Adam asks us, oh, right. "What is our favourite nonsensical word?" It's Adam, delicious. that's not a good comment. <laughs> Adam has just left a comment on my video going, "You smell." <laughs> Thank you, Adam. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, but I don't often use the word, but I do often sing it. I feel like how can you have a favourite nonsense? If you say it loud enough, you know it's supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. What you don't have is it's in your ear right now. Hello. Hello. It just happens. <laughs> I, like, I think, what is the point in a nonsensical word? Because it doesn't mean anything, you can't use it. It is a fun word. Like, okay, and Adam asked what our favourite Victorian word is as well. Didn't you, Adam? Mm. Mine was tart. That's a fun word. I love, I know. I, I, know. Love, I love all the words for like, women who are prostitutes. Prostitute, mistress, courtesan, whore, tart. There's so many. I know, it's great. Now it's like all the words sound so horrible. It's because they are horrible. They were horrible to begin with. That's the point. And they have these like sounds like tart, whore. It's a great word. I know tart is whore. a fun word to say. Tart. tart. I know. But they're very harsh sounds. Tart. And they just have slag. <laughs> Slag, slag. I went slag, 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 and, slag and slag technically aren't prost like aren't No, it, it's they. the sort of derogatory like words yes. for like derogatory words for humans. We were discussing this. There aren't enough derogatory words for men in regards to promiscuity. Yeah, because they aren't shamed for it. Yeah, exactly. That says you a lot. Back to the Weinstein scandal. It's tied a bit of bow. And our last question is from Christopher. If the apocalypse was about to happen and you and three other people would be the only survivors, who would you pick? I would pick Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Adam? Yay! I love you, Jordan! I picked you, I'm taking out of it's okay. No, 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 no! Ah, my dress has fallen down! Ah! No, you know what? I would become a zombie and then I'd bite you and turn you into one too. So yeah, you, can be, you can be like hot. Oh, no, not hot. Fuzz, Shaun of the Dead. You can be the like dead. the shed or something. Shaun of the Shed. <laughs>
Right. Mm. Through the people. I know who it's not going to be. I know who it's not going to be. I would take. What how would you? How would what, you not take your I, dad, your brother? And what then... if I did something really cruel? What if I said I would take your mum, Adam, <laughs> and Chris, and really cool. <laughs> and then just leave you to die? <laughs> but that's me too. <laughs> that's what you get for not taking me. <laughs> oh, my dad's gonna watch this. I'm gonna be sad now. Why? Well, I, I, I can't win. I've got a family of four, and Chris. So I would take my dad, my brother. And my two dogs was which cat yeah, was one person. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, George is killing me in the apocalypse. Uh, and I'm not killing seeing her. Well, you're, you're, you're actively, you're actively, you're actively searching for my demise. I'm only passively doing it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I did. Don't know if you did. I don't think you did. Love me. <laughs> Go to subscribe to Georgia. Uh, her Twitter and Instagram is also linked below. It's also yeah. My Twitter and Instagram are this, like, subscribe, and all the jazz, and I will see, see you guys you. very soon. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm. Emma, we're making a video. Oh my god, are you? Adam, get out of the screen. You're only here for focus and light purposes. Thank you.